So we began to talk about Laplace transform is a kind of extensive, extensive version of Fourier transform, right? And then we talk about why we have to think about the region of convergence. And then we introduce one way to define a region of convergence, defines a region in complex domain, which region they converge to a certain value, in which region they diverge to, so, um, they diverge. So we have to select the reason that the free, uh, Laplace transform can converge to a certain value. And one <coughs> clue over there here is we have region of convergence in complex domain in real and imaginary axis, they usually draw a line vertically. They, they don't draw a line laterally. They don't do that. Because as we show in last example, our E delta T coming from our real part, they decide the convergence convergence or divergence. They decide convergence or divergence. So that's the reason that the real part is really important, deciding the convergence or divergence. That's the reason that they more talk about the amplitude, a kind of value in real value, real, real part, instead of the value in, y, in imaginary part. That's the reason we draw line vertically instead of laterally. So let's talk about that more detail. Mm. So we have covered by far, and uh, page six, <coughs> last time, we talk about several things. Say, if you have two different regional convergence. Say, this is your regional convergence number one. Say, this is your regional convergence number two. Then, the, the regional convergence of whole system will be the common area between them. So overlapping area. That's why we have talked about last time. Now, we introduced a pole N0 last time. I think, I think I don't have to talk much about this in this lecture because I saw several of you began to study about the exam about the control theory, which is you have to learn about the particular poles. Pretty familiar with it. But the definition of zero pole, in short, we have the numerator, we have numerator, Pole is the variable make the numerator zero. Zero is a variable make numerator zero. Zero we symbol as a circle O. We have X for the pole. That's very common thing. And several interesting point. If I think you already know about this, if you know the control. If the order of the S, the order of the S means, say your denominator is, for example, like this, and numerator is looks like this, for example. The order, order of the numerator is two over here, the maximum power, and then order of numerator is one over here. If The order of the numerator is same to the order of numerator plus k. Then, as k go to infinite, as s go to infinite, as s go to infinite, x go to zero. If total goes zero, that means general. Ks has k poles, k number of k poles at infinity. If 
the order of ds is the order of ns plus k, the same situation, but in this case, s, s go to infinite, when go to infinite frequency, x total value go to unbounded. In general, x has k zeros at infinity. That's how the, thing, the most of the thing people talk about this case. More detail about that, please take a look at the control theorem. One clue you may think about this one is you is right hand pole is good or right hand zero is good or bad. Right hand plane, RHP zeros, they good or bad for convergence. You are taking exam tomorrow to, <laughs> to take a look at it. Right, right hand four, right hand zero. So, what we have to keep on memorizing here in this lecture, in this simulation system, we don't want to talk about too much about pole and zero convergence issues because they're not a part of this lecture. However, Keep in mind, we have a regional convergence because of E minus real time T plus we, uh, we plot pole and zero as X or circle on the plane. Now, let's have another example given like this. Um, delta T equals, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> xt equals delta t minus over 3e minus t ut So let's have an example like this. Hmm? Hmm. You? So <coughs> let's take a free transform for that. Okay, so they will be one minus three over four. When you do that, S plus probably like this, I think, is it right? Yep. 3 over 1, S minus 2 over 1. Why? Because E minus A, T, U, T, they become S plus A over 1 in the first transform. Okay? And delta, they, cha they change to one in the first transform. So this is okay in a uh, free transform. That's not a big deal. We don't have to worry about that. How about the regional convergence thing? So, so calculating the value, you don't have much problem, I think. But Regional convergence is a little bit strange feeling, a strange concept, so we have to take a look at it. So before we move on, let's take a look at this. So first of all, from this part, we say regional convergence is, is what? This is, uh, it should be larger than one, larger than one, My, I'm sorry, minus one. This is what? From 2, it should be larger than 2. So we have to find out the overlapping area. We have to find out the overlapping area. So currently, we have regional convergence over here. What about this? What about delta? What is regional convergence in delta?
자, 답을 보여줄게요. 인 all s. 인 every places. 인 all s. That's the answer. So why? Well, we can have many explanations why it looks like this. Uh, one explanation we can think about here is you can think that delta is very, very sharp line, very, very sharp peak. So in here, this S, if the real value of this S is, is quite big, that means they, can be, they may be diverge. That's the reason that we define regional convergence. But this delta value is very small. I mean, if you plot, if you plot it delta, so there's many ways we can explain why it looks like this. So just think that it's very conceptually. This is really small. Maybe I actually zero. I will then t equals zero. When t equals zero, then this is one. So you don't have to worry about it. When t is not zero, then this is, is close to zero or zero. So we don't have to worry about that. That's the reason whatever else happens, they converge. So very conceptually thinking. So this, this delta covers all area. So overlapping area is this. So regional convergence is uh, S is a real part of S is larger than 2. That's why we talk about regional convergence. Let's draw four and zeros. So let's calculate this. So. Uh, 3 s plus 1 s minus 2 over if you calculate it will look like this so you'll have minus 1 as a pole minus 2 are uh, 2 as a pole and 0 2 zeros at 1 that's how you think that. Have you notified something from here to here? So from this example, you have minus 1 over here. right? And this edge of regional convergence. Because they're coming from looks like this. So minus a is pole of the system and they are edge of our regional convergence right likewise in here you have regional com initially we have regional convergence larger than this regional convergence larger than this so keep in mind pole is at edge of regional convergence if there's more than one pole we select the overlapping area Likewise, you will have in here also, from here, you have a regional convergence from the pole, regional convergence from the pole. So when there is a pole, that means another regional just happens. So, in here, in here, previous example, previous example, go to previous example. They covers imaginary axis with this line. Imaginary axis. Previously, previously in this example, they, they covers the regional <coughs> convergence include those axes. So <coughs> when S equals J omega, what is it? Laplace transform, Fourier transform. Right? This is special case that, so let's go back to the example. Fred transform J omega. Laplace, uh, Laplace transform S equals delta plus J omega. A special case of Fred transform. In this one, you can consider them as imaginary axis because real part is zero. 
so they are equivalent to your axis. Actually, they may converge to the circle. However, Laplace transform is whole plane imaginary axis. In this example, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, let's go back to this example. In this example, regional convergence is this area, which does not include the imaginary axis, right? The, the, uh, the example we, I just showed you. Meaning that the imaginary axis, any value imaginary axis cannot converge. This is imaginary axis, right? This is area in imaginary axis. This cannot converge in this example. That means this one doesn't have free transform. So you can judge if you do not have free transform or not by using this, this method. Previous example, they include the imaginary axis. So they, uh, they are free transform converge. The free transform is imaginary axis over here. In this example right here, they don't include the imaginary axis, which is, uh, you can think them as free transform. So free transform, this system does not converge. That's what the example shows. Okay, so this is the end of the example, and we will talk about property now. Uh, question before we move on. You okay? Are you okay? Uh, the, the question was why we have to put real? Because if you say S is larger than 2, what's the meaning of it? Absolute value? Because S is like 2.5J is larger than 3.4J, which is larger. We cannot tell. So we either say real part, uh, real part is like this, or imaginary part is like that. So we have to select uh, only real part to compare in purpose, or maybe you can get an absolute value. Visual convergence, we just say ROC equals comma ROC equals something like this, or just simply say, you don't have to worry about that, just write that. Question. Let's move on. So, property. So, property, so we will talk about two properties, unfortunately. We talk about the property of the equation by far, linearity, more. Uh, Evolution, whatever. Now we have two things: equation and regional convergence. So first, we will talk about the property of regional convergence first. Okay. So regional convergence, property number one: the regional convergence consists of strips of parallel to j-axis in S plane. Blah blah blah. What are you talking about? So this is what they say. This is what, they, what I saw before. They made up vertical line in S plane. Because the real part side the convergence or not. So that means the real part the real part of S decide convergence or not. So this should be larger than certain value or smaller than certain value, which is the same to vertical line. Once again, uh, real part decide convergence or not. And the real part can be, can be given by real part of S is larger than certain value. I, I'm saying certain value is, is maybe A, I say, or smaller than certain value. Regarding either case, the equivalent to vertical line, which is parallel to our imaginary axis. That's what they say in, in property number one, just the vertical line. That's what they say. Property number two. 
for rational Laplace transform, the reasonable convergence does not contain any pole. Let's go to the example. This one contains pole. This pole is included inside the system. I'm inside the, the, the dark area over here. No, right? They are outside. What about other, other examples? Nope. Zero is inside, but not there. No pole inside. Because, because, <coughs> so new number one is their vertical line. And if you decide regional convergence, they have a pole, usually have a pole at the boundary, but there is no pole inside the reason. Because, because it's pretty, pretty rational, pretty reasonable. Pole is what? Something like, in case of rational thing, of course, the assumption is rational. This one, make the denominator set as a pole. Right? And from this analysis, the, the real part of S of this one should be larger than 1. Real part of S is larger than minus 2. And we are finding overlapping area. The most, the pole located at the most right side on your point. So if you have another pole over here, that means we have to select regional, new regional convergence. Right? That's the reason that it looks like this. If so, this oh, 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 oh. they probably number two, number one vertical line, number two no pole inside because if there is pole, we have to draw you have five or other regional convergence, right? Number three, if x t is finite duration and absolutely integrable. Then S plane, the original convergence will be entire S plane. Well, that's not so intuitive in a sentence. So let's have an example. <clears throat> let's assume a new example. Say. Um, They are defined in finite length, have them like this. So this one, two assumptions, finite duration. Duration is limited, not infinite, right? It's limited, plus they are absolutely integrable. Absolutely integrable is what? If you integrate over a certain length, this is from, from minus infinity to infinity actually, but from here to here, here to here is zero. So we can think of them like this. Absolutely integrate. If this one is that, is, is, this one has a value, this, this one converge. That means that's, it's absolutely integrable. More specifically, we define them like this. Initially, initially they were given like this. From, from, from minus infinity to T1, from t2 to infinite, they are zero. So we just ignore this. So this is definition of definitely integrable. So two things, they are confined in time, they are limited in time, and absolutely integrable. That means what? If you say, How we worry, why we worry is about the convergence. <coughs> so why we, I think it's hard for you. I think Cheer up a little bit. So we have a uh, um, uh, so reason that we care about regional convergence is because of this term. In Laplace transform, we have 
like looks like this, right? And then if you combine this, it will always looks like so we can define them as Laplace, a fair transfer of this one. So if, if this one converts, then it's fine. If two dies variable, there's two is trouble. So we have to consider this delta the delta value over here. If this is absolutely integrable, then this one, this one is what? Also combined. Whatever delta happens, this one is also combined. So this one is still absolutely integrable. Because the reason that this may diverge, this may diverge is when t goes to infinite. Or x has a very strange infinite value at certain point. This one don't have those things. They are finite in time, don't have to go to <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh. <coughs> They are finite, so don't have to go to infinite, which is not a trouble for, the, for t. Also, they are absolutely integral, which don't have any special point making y x value to be infinite large. So because of it, if this is, this is true, finite and absolutely integral, then this is also not infinite. They cannot be going to infinite. So whatever you select s, whatever, whatever you select, that means whatever as you select, they converge. So if they are limited in time, finite in time, and then absolutely integrable, then the original converge is all area, whole plane. That's what they say. Number four. This is interesting. Ah, question. For the question. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the question was, if this is absolutely integrable, then I claim that this is also true, right? This is, uh, what, what, uh, what she pointed out is, if this is really true when delta is positive, if delta is negative, that means this is positive, then it, it may diverge. But now, uh, I didn't, that's my, my bad, I should write down this. Because we don't have minus infinite, we don't have plus infinite, so this, this t don't go to infinite, so we don't have to worry about that. Right? Okay, good question. Um, other question? Okay, let's move on. So probably number four. This is an interesting one. Mm. If xt is right-sided, meaning that if there's x which is starting from certain point to go to this side, which is right-sided, 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 then and if the line, real part of S is in diagonal convergence, then all values of S for which real time of S larger than, zero, larger than uh, delta zero will also be original convergence. Um, what the hell of this one talking about? So not so straightforward, right? So let's take a look at how things are going. So since, uh, sentence is pretty simple. We are talking about signals other than this. So let's take a look at this. So say that this one is right-sided signal. We will talk about right, right, left side signal in next page. And say the regional convergence, we already know it. Regional convergence is larger than delta zero. 
Is it right? Mm. I'm sorry. So there are some regional convergence. They say this is our regional convergence. And this line, delta 0 happened to be here. And this line is included inside the regional convergence. That's the assumption. That's the assumption we have now. Result, what we claim here is all values of S making real part of S larger than delta 0, which is any value of S over this area, this red area. They also, they also converge. How? So let's pick up our arbitrary, arbitrary S, arbitrary point over here, say arbitrary point over here, making their uh, real part delta 1. So real, let's pick up a point, the delta 1 at this point, which is larger than delta 0. Let's pick up a point like that. And decide how things have changed. First of all, let's start from our assumption. Assumption. Assumption is number one, they're right-sided, and then the real part, this one is included inside here. Meaning that if this is included, then this what? If you if you do the Laplace transform, x t e minus s t, which can be divided into delta t times e minus j omega t dt. And we say delta 0 is inside the region of convergence. We already know it. That means this is absolutely integrable, right? That means this is absolutely integrable, right? Because they have to converge. This one should be absolutely integrable. And then this one is positive, right? Delta is positive, so you can take them out. And then this is right-handed, right-handed. So 0 to t1, say t1 is over here. 0 minus infinity to t1 is, is 0. We don't have to worry about it. So you can change this minus to t1. So once again, this is our assumption. This is our right-handed signal, and then they are, um, their delta 0 is included inside regional convergence. As we already know that at S equal, real part of S equal delta 0, they converge. So we can think them as they are absolutely integrable at the point of delta T0. Because they are right-handed side, right-handed one, so from minus infinity to T1 is 0. So we, we can change minus infinity to T1. That's how it goes. This is our assumption. This is our assumption. Then, this is our conclusion. What it claims here is, we define some delta 1 larger than delta 0, like this. And then, if this one is also absolutely integrable, then this means they are converged. So let's take a look at it. xt e minus delta 1t in here. <coughs> And then, of course, still they are writing this signal from 0 to minus infinity to t1 is 0. So t1 to infinity, that looks like this. And then, to infinity, we divide times e delta 1. Delta 1 is larger than delta 0. So we can divide them as minus delta 0t 
times e minus delta 1 minus delta 0 dt. This is how we can divide it. Any question regarding this? No. And then this one is keep in mind um, how about this? This one becomes how? Delta y is other than delta 0, right? So this is positive. So minus positive is minus. So if you plot this, as time goes, it looks like this, right? Is it right? This value falls, falls down like this because delta 1 is other than delta 0. So what is the maximum value of this at this point? which is t1. They start with t1 to infinite. They are not talking about minus infinite to t1. So this value is maximum at t1, which is they are, this is maximum and t1. So if you put t1 over here, that means t1 times t from infinite x t e minus delta 0 t dt, right? This is maximum at t1. So let's take a maximum point and take them out. This is the constant. This is what, or based on our assumption, they are absolutely integrable. So they are absolutely integrable. So if they are right-sided and then has then they have, a, they have a point, they have a line that they are within the regional convergence. Any value larger than that, they, they go to regional convergence. That's what they say. Before getting question, let's go to the next example. If they are reversed, if they are reversed, I put my, my red to see the example. If they are left side, so minus infinity to t1, they are not 0. From t1 to infinite, they are 0. Left-sided. So value like, like this. They stop here. And then, same thing. Number 1 is different. They are, they are left-sided. This is right-sided. The result was, in, in right-sided, the result was delta 1 larger than zero, delta 0. They are converged. Number 2 is still the same. In this case, in this case, we do the same thing, but in this one, in this one. If now, what, what things have changed from now here is, instead of t1 to the infinite, we have minus infinite to t1. Right? So now this one also becomes minus infinity to t1, minus infinity to t1, which is the value over here is reverse polarity. So we are not talking about this point. We are not talking about this area, but we are talking about this area. So in this case, this one should be plus, this one should be plus, right? Okay. So that means delta 1 minus delta 0 should be negative, meaning that delta 1 should be smaller than delta 0. So in this example, the right left hand signal, delta 1 is smaller than delta 0. So values smaller than delta 0, they converge. So the other. So this keep in mind, keep in mind, 
this example we already showed before. This example we already showed before. Let's go back to page four. In page four, we started from ut. Example, e minus at ut, which is right-handed signal. Okay. Let me raise this for a minute. We had an example that, first example, example number one, we have U, something like E minus A U T. And reasonable convergence is like this. Second example we had in page five was minus E A T U T should be minus over here. Mm. Minus T. Which has regional convergence like this. Right? In first two example, page four, page five, we have this example. This is what? In time domain, UT, right handed signal. This is what? U minus T in time domain, they are left hand signal. UT, U minus T, regardless of the, of the polarity of Y axis. Example number one, page four, is left right handed example, which is this. Example in page five is left handed example left hand signal which is right here. This one, the first example, they looks like they become larger. Delta one, any value larger than minus A, which is delta zero over here. So they are at the right side. The second example, which is left side signal, right here, the red one over here, smaller than certain value, they converge. So they draw a line and become smaller than certain value. So delta 1 over here is smaller than minus. Is it? So we are already showing you an example. So you can consider them this one like this. Right-handed signal is you have a pole, some point larger than that. Left in this signal, you have a line smaller than that. You can think them like this. Guess what? This one, these two, probably number four and number five shows. Uh, question. So now we think about something strange. We have two flights like this. If, if a signal is two sided, two sided, then there will be combination of these two, which does not look so interesting. So let's take a look at some regular signal like this. Let's have a regular signal like this. This is two-sided signal. It, it right right side, left side has no bounds. It's a keep on going like this. So two-sided signal. You can think this one as you just, you just, you just divide it. Let's, let's, draw, let's draw a line here. Let's draw them here, and then you can divide them into two graphs. One is this part, they draw it. From this part, they draw it. 
of course, it's slightly different. So what, what I'm showing here is from here to here, I draw it one graph. From here to here, I draw the other graph. You got it? So this one is just divided into left-handed signal and right-handed signal. This left-handed signal from this red one, they will have a convergence region smaller than certain value. In this one, they will have a convergence region larger than certain value. Region of convergence, and they basically you can combine it as plus of distance, plus this. Region of convergence should be overlapping area, right? So what they result in is the overlapping area between these two. That's what this one shows. If you see this picture, they say um, they have one graph over here. They divide into two graphs. And then this, this one, right in this signal, has a, a region coming like this. Left in the signal, they look like this. If they over, find overlapping area, they will look like this. That's what they talk about. So two-sided signal, they probably have a limited between those two points. If those two points not overlapping, there's no regional convergence. Okay, how many property? <laughs> uh, seven, you already know that. Uh, if, if this is rational, I mean, if it's not rational, 유리함수가 아니면, in Korea, 유리함수, rationally 아니면, if it's not rational, then this does not net. I, I mentioned that at the, at the edge, we have a pole. At the edge, we have a pole, right? So this number seven is like that. This regional convergence is bounded by poles and extend to infinite because we have a pole at the side. Then, number eight is also the same. I explained that if I want to explain that there's more than one pole, then will be the regional convergence will be this. So. Assumption of this one is, in case of right-handed signal, right signal, then the regional convergence will go to your right side. So same direction, right side, right side, right? What this one says here is, from this claim, we claim that if there's more than one pole in the system, we have pole over here, we have pole over here, we have pole over here. And we know that this signal is right-handed signal. Then we know that its regional convergence is, this one's regional convergence is here, over here. This one's regional convergence is over here. This one's regional convergence is over here. So overlapping area will be this, right? So this is right-handed signal. That means the regional convergence will be the right most, most right signal. Uh, I'm sorry, most right pole from this right pole to the infinite. That's regional convergence. If this is left handed signal like this, then regional convergence, if they have more than one pole, then there will be this side, left side. So from here to here, from here to here, over here to here. So regional convergence is what? over this area, which is most left pole, right side of most of the pole. That's what they say in problem number eight. So number seven, they say they, they have pole at the edge. Number eight, if there's a right-handed, there's right-most one, left-handed, left-most one. That's what they talk about. OK, question. So All right, and we now talk about inverse Laplace transform. 
If we number transform, if you have, remember, um, we don't have to follow the detail. This is a result. <laughs> so, xt is given by 2 pi over minus infinite to infinite x s e s t d t. So, oh, I'm sorry, t omega. I once mentioned the how to memorize the equation. We starting from like phrase, phrase three is say we have transformed for time domain signals to something else like a k. We used to have minus j omega t minus one. If you go back to time domain using a k, we usually have just j omega k, something like this, right? So. When you have, when you convert time domain to something else, you have minus over there. When you convert back to time domain, you have plus over there. So this one is the reverse is what? We go back to time domain. So we don't have a minus, we have plus over there. So still valid. And how we decide this? We sometimes have pi, sometimes you, you have infinite. How we decide pi and infinite or n even? Periodic or not, right? This is periodic? No, don't have to be. This is continuous? Yes, this is continuous. So we have to select infinite. So if you, I, 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 I dare say, you better to memorize the equation. However, too many equations, so very confusing. So once you want to check if your equation is right or not, think about that. They go back to time domain or change time domain to something else and they will give you an idea about this part and then uh, from here to here periodic infinite number I mean periodic or continuous or discontinuous then you will think about as infinite to pi or n so this is the value And now, <laughs> we'll talk about the properties of Laplace transform. <sighs> let's breathe. Uh, okay, let's finish. Uh, we have first number one, linearity, which is A1 x1 plus b1 x2, which is linearity, you already know it, a1 x s, b1 x s, object number one, always linearity. Second, what do you expect? Time shifting, shifting time. So, x t minus t0, they becomes what? Usually have e something, right? E something. I also give you some clue that from time to frequency or from something else, we have minus comes as out itself. If you have frequency to time, for example, they comes as also exponential. So in this relationship, from time shifting, frequency shifting, time to frequency, we have minus come as my as itself. From frequency to time, they reverse polarity. I explained the right duality and similarity between time to something else, something else to time. I explained th this, they are quite different. Remember, time to frequency, they always come as itself. Then you can think the other way. So, this is easy. Before we move on. Hmm? Yeah. So, 
This is pretty popular thing we have used by far. Rapper transform, free transform, whatever. But rapper transform, we have a new concept called regional convergence. So how to utilize it? Let's take a look at it. Number one. First number one. If you go back to our example of two sided signal, we divide them into two signal. Left handed, right handed. Actually, they are added together. So think about linearity. And we find overlapping area between these two because this one is left handed in S plane right-handed in S plane also. So we find overlapping area. To this one, we can think this way, plus, plus. So we have to find um, regional convergence will be, say, this one regional convergence number one, regional convergence number two, we will find overlapping area. That means the area, they are overlapping. They are common in a sense. And this one, in this one, we're just adding by a kind of constant, a, a kind of scale value. Regional convergence doesn't change by this scale value. So regional convergence will be the same. Likewise, this one will be quite the same. But, but, there's a trick over here. In this one, in this one, we have a scale value in S domain. Regional convergence is where? Regional convergence is not time domain, they are frequent domain, the complex domain, right? So, uh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase it. Regional convergence we decide in complex domain, not time domain. So in this one, they multiply them, scale them in S domain, so, so scale in S domain. But this one, they shift, they shift in S domain, right? They shift in S domain. So say your regional convergence happened to be starting from zero, there is what your rightmost pole, and this is your regional convergence in X, S. This one is what? Now you have to shift, right? So S is zero, we have to shift. So your regional convergence is, regional convergence is this plus real part of S zero so that you can shift the region of convergence. So this one is still the same because they're always the scale, but this one, you have to add this because you have to shift. Okay? This one is overlapping area. So did that answer your question? Question before we move on. Time scaling. One number four, time scaling. So likewise, we just keep on talk about what we have. Time scaling, we change to A over one, X. A over S. So this is very similar. We just have A good because of duality, but in, in the, the other way, uh, spreading in time or shrinking down in frequency. So if A become larger, that means shrinking down in time, expand in frequency. So that's how things are going. Convolution. Convolution is pretty simple. Uh, con conjugate, I'm sorry, conjugate. Xt conjugate is x. We used to have both star at inside and outside. That's typical. If this is real, then x is same to x star, I believe. If the A axis is real, 
which is the type similar what you have seen before. Finally, convolution. This is very useful many times. X1 convolution, X2, when they pass through a system, say you have system response H, you have X as input, the output will be in time domain X, H convolution X, which takes a lot of time. But in the first transform, there's a simply the multiplication, which is in frequent in the first transform, if you have if you want to find output y, there is a simply y multiplication in time domain. I would say frequent domain, that's it. So those are pretty popular, I think. And then think about the general convergence. In here, the first one, the first one over here. Think about in, in frequent domain. Think about the frequent domain, visual convergence in frequent domain. This one now, they initially say they initially have regional convergence like this. Let's say they have one. After that, after that, they scale to be what? You need an A. Now, previously, let's say X, S, this looks like that. X, S over A, it looks like this. So they will regional convergence change it. And how they do it? The new one is A times R1 because you multiply A from 1 to A. So you change like that. In case of conjugate, in case of conjugate, conjugate doesn't matter much because conjugate, they change the polarity of imaginary axis. In the conver usual convergence, here and here doesn't matter, right? So we don't care much about it. We only care about real part, so that's not change. In convolution, in convolution, this one should converge, this one should converge, right? To make this multiplication converge, this one should converge and this one should converge. So should be this one and this one. So it should be overlapping area. One more time. This one, if, just think about the frequent domain, what happens in frequent domain. In frequent domain, this one scales up, like you can see here, so this one changes. The second one, they become, the conjugate means only positive and negative, so it does not have to be influence in real part. So that's another change. This one, both this, both this should converge. If they are the same, that doesn't matter. But if they are different, we should find the overlapping area. Finally, what we, uh, and then we probably think, think, think what, we, what comes in after differential. Differential. As we, may, we many times talk about that, integration S over one. On the left. This uh, should be number nine. Differential, it looks like this. Integration, which is integration which is S over X. <coughs> and what about if you have differential in frequency, you will have minus T X T. So think about the similarity between time and frequency. Differential in time, they will positive S. Differential in frequency, they are in negative T. So only polarity difference, but they are quite similar in the wise. Of course, integration, they look like that. Let's think about the visual convergence. Differential 
it's sometimes very hard to find regional convergence. So they just say it just con contains the regional convergence. Because if this one does not converge, then because of this S, they may not, may not converge, but they always con have to con contain those, those R. This one, we just different, differentiate in, in frequency. So frequency why it does not change. So they're still the same. In this one, they still don't know what happens, but they should contain the regional convergence side of S because of this part. 